story recap here. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy and sci-fi film called Love, Death, and Robots, Three Robots, and Three Robots Exit Strategies. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In the desolate land of a fallen world, what used to be humanity's home is now a mere post-apocalyptic space of debris. A human skull is crushed under the weight of a robot as it marches to its destination. The white robot, Xbot 4000, then looks around and asks his companion whether they're lost again. A tiny orange robot, KVRC, follows Xbot shortly behind, checking his hologram map to lead their group to the right way. Meanwhile, their other companion, 1145G, a pyramid-like robot, continues to be fascinated by their surroundings and snaps pictures of the ruined Earth. KVRC urges them to follow quickly, but Xbot counters that if one has seen a post-apocalyptic city, they've seen them all. Sightseeing at a school gym, 1145G sees writing on the wall with a dead cheerleader skeleton underneath it. 1145G zooms in on the corpse, saying it looks good before snapping a picture. On the other hand, Xbot is looking at the hanged corpse of a basketball player as 1145G takes the cheerleader's pom-poms, goofing around with them chanting, Go Team! Calling over his friends, KVRC points them toward the court, showing them the entertainment sphere, which is merely a basketball, as 1145G points out. Unwilling to let his excitement die, KVRC says he's getting into the vibes of experiencing human things for the first time. Xbot asks what humans do with the balls, so KVRC says humans did all kinds of things with it, like bouncing. When Xbot asks whether that's it, 1145G tells him that bouncing things were close to maxing out the cognitive range of humans. KVRC adds that humans sometimes took the ball and hit it with a stick. Confused, Xbot asks whether it's when balls misbehave. Thus, 1145G starts hitting the basketball, calling it a bad ball. Picking up the ball, KVRC passes it to Xbot, telling him to try bouncing it. But with Xbot not knowing what to do, he declines. 1145G tells him to stop being so whiny and just bounce the ball, ending her statement with a please. Giving them what they want, Xbot readies to bounce the ball. But instead of dribbling it, he just drops it on the floor, letting it bounce on its own until it stops. Cheering, KVRC states fascination, saying that it was amazing and asking Xbot all about his experience in trying it out. However, Xbot just tells him it was anticlimactic, so 1145G comments, Welcome to humans. Recuperating at a forsaken diner, 1145G fixes the jukebox to play a song. Meanwhile, the other two, who are occupying a booth, stare at an untouched plate of a molded hamburger. Despite his uncertainty with the topic, KVRC explains the concept to Xbot, saying humans would shove food in their intake orifices, or mouths, to generate power. This makes Xbot confused, asking why one would need an entire orifice to generate power. KVRC points out how it was crazy that humans had all sorts of orifices orifices with things coming in and others going out. As they point out that they use fusion batteries to power themselves, Xbot wonders what else they would need. Thus, he asks KVRC what comes after when a human takes the food into their mouths. Instead, 1145G takes over the explanation, saying that humans' orifices had rocky pegs or teeth that would crush the food into a paste before the paste moved into an internal vat of acid, which would be the stomach. Sarcastically, Xbot says that makes perfect sense. Still confused, KVRC points out that humans could have just dumped the food into an external vat of acid so they wouldn't need the rocky pegs. However, 1145G tells them that expecting logic from beings with internal vats of acid is too much. With the crazy revelations, Xbot asks who designed humans, so KVRC answers that it's unclear since humans didn't have a creator signature. While playing waitress at the counter, 1145G tells them that humans are made by an unfathomable deity out of dust for no reason. Then, she says it's a joke because humans came from a very warm soup. Moving to a skeleton, 1145G puts the plate of random items in front of it before taking the skeleton's cap and wearing it on her head. Moving on, the three robots sit side by side on a couch of some random apartment, staring at a creature. To explain its existence, 1145G recounts how humans had an entire network devoted to disseminating pictures of these creatures, which are cats. In front of them, the cat stretches before it walks to Xbot, rubbing itself on the robot's legs. Xbot starts freaking out, asking what the cat is doing as it jumps on his lap to get cozy. 
Calming him down, KVRC tells Xbot to make no sudden moves and wait until the cat decides to leave on its own. When Xbot asks how long that'll take, 1145G says it could very well be hours or years. Xbot complains that he doesn't have that much time to let a cat sit on his lap, so KVRC suggests petting the cat to irritate it. However, he admits that he doesn't have any idea what to do either since it's his first time seeing a real cat. Still, he tells Xbot to try. Petting the cat, Xbot feels the cat starting to purr, so KVRC starts to back away, saying Xbot must have activated it. He adds that if the noise stops, it might explode on him. Laughing nervously, Xbot asks whether that's for certain, but 1145G starts backing away too, telling Xbot that it's possible since her historical research shows that humans had a card game called Exploding Kittens. With his friends standing on the other side of the room, as far as they can from the cat, Xbot starts freaking out as KVRC lightheartedly says he might die now. Not taking this seriously, 1145G takes out her camera to snap a photo of Xbot with a cat. So Xbot flips her off in the photo. Afterward, they visit a console shop for a game device called Xbot 3. Thus, KVRC asks whether it's Xbot 4000's ancestors because it would make sense numerically. When Xbot mentions that it might just be a coincidence, 1145G tells him that robots don't do coincidences. Teasing Xbot, KVRC and 1145G tell him to call the device Mommy or Daddy. Annoyed, Xbot asks if 1145G has an off button. When KVRC teases him by pretending to be a mother, Xbot threatens to disintegrate him, taking out a laser gun from his shoulder. However, KVRC points out that Xbot won't be able to do that because the cat is still on his shoulders. KVRC then sets the console aside, asking whether they want to turn it on. The other two decline, and 1145G points out how weird it'll be for Xbot to see his ancestors heaving its hard drives. At the mention of the ancestry again, KVRC remarks how the Xbot console's entire existence was defined by 13-year-old boys using it to teabag their enemies in video games. Not knowing the term, Xbot asks what teabag means, so he searches it up in his head, despite 1145G's warning him not to do so. Upon finding his answer, Xbot reacts in surprise as he expresses disgust at the action. Punishing KVRC for making him look it up, Xbot puts the cat on KVRC's head, saying he's been catbagged. Afterward, Xbot picks up the console and takes a power button to replace a missing eye socket. Continuing their walk, 1145G asks about KVRC's ancestry, so he explains that he comes from a proud line of baby monitors. 1145G points out that there aren't a lot of babies anymore, so KVRC admits that they were terrible at their job. With their tour coming to its end, they arrive at their last location, a nuclear bomb warehouse. When Xbot asks what the bomb is for, 1145G explains that it's to annihilate as many humans as possible. To defend the humans, KVRC mentions that humans only use them a few times. However, 1145G rebuts that humans would actually only need to use it a few times. Xbot asks whether it's what ended humans, but 1145G monologues about how humans caused their own downfall due to their arrogance. Believing that they were the pinnacle of existence, humans inevitably damaged their own environment by poisoning the water, killing the land, and choking the sky. In the end, no nuclear war was needed. Xbot and KVRC react uncomfortably at 1145G's explanation, asking if she's alright. Thus, the robot apologizes, saying she thought it sounded better than merely saying, humans screwed themselves over. As they're leaving, Xbot comes to the conclusion that humans died from environmental disasters, but KVRC adds that it's also because humans genetically engineered cats to have opposable thumbs. Suddenly, the cat speaks up from behind them, agreeing with KVRC's statement. The cat tells them that once they were able to open their own food cans, the human race was done for. To be sure, 1145G asks whether cats would explode if they stopped being petted, but the cat gives an ambivalent answer, telling them to keep petting just to be sure. Then, the cat reveals that he brought some friends, making the three realize that they're surrounded by feline creatures. Seeing all the cats, 1145G concludes that they're extending their vacation. After a while, the three robots arrive by ship to visit Earth once again. 
However, KVRC accidentally parks their ship on a minefield. Just as KVRC points out that the mines must be too old to function, a bird lands on one, making it explode. Continuing their journey, KVRC leads the way as 1145G exits the ship, proceeding to snap photos of the surroundings. There, they plan to do in-depth research on post-apocalyptic humanity, hoping it could give them tips on how their own kind can survive. Still, Xbot is worried about the mines as he picks up a skull. With the others not listening, Xbot throws the skull behind him, triggering another landmine as he carefully treads through the dirt. First on their list is a survivalist camp, though Xbot comments on the irony of how there are only dead people in there. According to his thorough historical research from Wikipedia, KVRC cites that people in these survivalist camps were actually anticipating the end of civilization. 1145G adds that people thought that once they were free from government-sponsored medical care, they could start a utopian society with enough bullets and venison jerky. However, at that point in time, humans had already hunted every animal to extinction that was larger than a cat. Afterward, they began to raid each other's camps. Calling over the two, KVRC shows them a blood pit that he found, which is a pit trap with spikes at the bottom. Xbot asks whether the last of humanity tried to survive with mere guns and spike traps, so KVRC corrects him, saying those are just the poor ones. 1145G adds that the wealthy humans had a variety of sophisticated survival strategies. Going to a fancier location, the three land their ship on an independent structure by the sea, an example of seasteading. Although Xbot points out that it's just a mere oil rig, KVRC tells them that it's also its own fully sovereign nation state. Apparently, during the collapse, wealthy humans tried to create a new civilization in places like these, hoping to survive with fish and sea greens. However, by then, the seas had already been overfished, and the ocean pollution minimized their resources thanks to microplastics. Because the seasteaders mostly consisted of tech millionaires, 1145G mentions a tactical error in their survival. They relied on technology and automated assistance to run the place, instead of taking humans with actual practical skills. Going to the counter, 1145G shows them a tablet that spawns Elena, a hologram seastead attendant. When 1145G tries out Elena functions by asking for a fishing net, Elena answers in a rude and berating way, calling them disgusting meat bags and telling them to catch their own fish. With that, KVRC reacts in surprise as he realizes this is where the robot uprising began. As for Xbot's understanding, he wonders if humans would have had a better chance of survival if the millionaires were more socially inclusive. However, they end up laughing at the thought, saying humans had no chance. KVRC adds that humans were mean to robots, thus robots killed them. Moving on to another location, 1145G briefs him about how the leaders of the human race retreated to underground bunkers to wait out the apocalypse, in hopes of being able to start a new world order once everything blows over. Upon entering, Xbot trips and complains how the humans built an impregnable nuclear fortress but forgot to add a light switch. To help out, KVRC takes a chair to reach the light switch, showing them humanity's final stronghold. When the lights power on, however, they're greeted with a buffet room. Confused, Xbot asks whether humans just retreated to bunkers and had dinner parties. Seeing a document held by one of the skeletons, 1145G discovers that the bunker's self-sustaining hydroponic system began failing when a fungus wiped out their first crop. Without their resources, starvation set in. Thus, they resulted in cannibalism. The three looked at the centerpiece of the buffet, which is a human skeleton on a plate. Inspecting the table, they realized that the humans had a voting system to see who would be eaten. Unluckily for Steve, the Secretary of Agriculture, everyone seemed to have held a grudge against him, so most of the votes went to him. Complaining that their trip is starting to get depressing, Xbot asks whether any humans survived. With that thought, they visit the space station, where a massive pile of skeletons lies just outside the fences. Seeing the papers, Xbot is in disbelief as he realizes the humans went to Mars, though KVRC corrects him, saying that only the filthy rich ones, such as the 0.01%, were able to go. When Xbot asks about the rest of the people, 1145G merely presses a button for his answer. Upon triggering the mechanism, flamethrowers ignite from the fences, burning the people who may have lied in wait for a chance to flee the Earth. Thus, 1145G tells him that the elite was not sympathetic to other people's concerns. Confused, Xbot wonders why humans didn't just use the money for spaceships to save their planet, but KVRC tells him there's no fun in that. 
Xbot then concludes that humans are the worst. With that, 1145G goes on a monologue about how humans had all the tools and resources to save themselves, yet ultimately, greed and self-gratification took over, dismissing the future of their children and a chance of having a healthy biosphere. Before she could continue, KVRC throws a skull at 1145G, complaining that her monologue is boring. Instead, he shows them a video of one of the rockets that successfully launched into space. Xbot is glad to see that at least there were survivors, while KVRC wonders who made it out. On Mars, habitable domes occupied the space as the surviving population was able to re-establish society. As a spacesuit-clad person picks up their margarita, they open their helmet to take a sip, only to reveal that it's a cat. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.